Mr. Lonnie. Lonnie is a Texas native, raised in the Netherlands. He is the vice president of the Texas Bluebird Society. For 40 years, he worked in the oil and chemical industry. He's involved in all things Bluebird. He is a passionate individual about the Texas Bluebird Society and about Texas Bluebirds. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Lonnie. And I was trying to show a part of the that they could have birds down where they were in Mississippi. 
take it all the way down to the coast and all the way down. If you're going to put a box up and you have these educational signs that you can purchase on our website, and uh, they're really handy. I like to see them on someone's net somewhere where I put them in the driveway. It lets me know that they are really dedicated to bluebirds. Now, bluebirds like open areas. I ain't going to put high pressure, short grasses. They are a. I've heard this said that they are like a miniature hawk. I have to ambush them, right? And I've been on the ground purchasing them. And they did say that their attempts are far successful. Successfully had the birds in the years, year after year, and now I've been able to turn boxes. So the magic word people say, How far are you from? There's no rule. No First off, three cool. <laughs> we recommend 100 yards if you have the area outside the birds territory with about 50 yards. So then you'll have them like this. Now you may not have two sensitive birds in your box, but they, you'll have the tip house and another cabinet. And this is the house in the city where I think that lives. You see the box with the extended pole. Now I think that gives the bird the bird. This is one in a rural area. And one thing you have to be careful about is places away from the house. So they can't get against the dogs or anything else. They will make it use the trash bags and tear it up. This was in Horsby Bend in Austin area, it's a this park, and it's um, an old area I heard of the interview of the country. And this is the snag, what we call, um, and this is the big tree. Now, if you have a home property, leave them, unless they're named or part of you or your property wasn't damaged because these holes are an actual wooden um, hole that the bird used for. Now we supplement that with our boxes. And over the last 15 or so years, we've put out and we're working on 15,000 boxes right now. And the bird population has come back. If you need a box, you go on that kind of distributor here. You can see what this is. And um, if you go home and you decide you want a box, your friends are talking about it, they want a box, they can contact somebody and put you in contact with them. You can also order them online. When you get a box or membership, you'll get a quick start. This is a recommended type of mapping box. It is a 3 4 inch jumping pipe. It's a small amount of box. It's a minimum of five feet for the box. It's a little bit of a house kit, and you don't fall on that thing. That's not to say you're going to have it, but not going to have an exception once in a while. And now the box on the MP with a strap and screws. You notice this one here. If you want the picture on the left, you can put that circle. If you do not want to put the screw inside the box, that will that hurt the birds, especially if you have a square. A four foot stick of rebar, or I like the half inch pipe. Now, in the old country, you may not be able to use half inch pipe. I can do it. I'm going to do the box. Right there. But that half inch and that three quarter pipe is not done. Without a predator guard, and you're you're taking a chance, and it's not fair to the to the birds. Now, once you get your box up, this is one thing we want to emphasize: use get go online and join the nest watch. One nest at a time. That's our motto. That's how we help, have helped the bluebirds across Texas. One nest box at a time. You can do this. So if you want to get one box, don't think oh it's not important. You go on here and you report your, you, you take a list and you check the number of eggs, the condition of the nest, things like that, and you report it. You put it on online. Now, what's really neat is they just came out with an app this month for your phone. I used to go around with a three-ring binder and a pencil and check them up, you know, and get back home and spend an hour and a half, two hours putting it in the computer. This all goes to Cornell University who compiles this data and uses it in their bird studies for population and trends. And uh, they can't get 
too much information. They're begging for people to put the information in. So this app is unbelievably fun and awesome. You walk up to your Nest box, you click on it, you put the number of days or whatever, you close it out, it automatically downloads and goes to their system. You don't have to go back home and put it in your computer. So yeah, it's uh, we're having a lot of fun with that. Now, when you learn how to do to look at a, at a nest, a check a nest, there's do's and don'ts. Plan your visit and uh, don't check it out in the morning or late in the evening. The birds lay their eggs from daylight to about 10, 30, 11. Normally, there are exceptions. Uh, avoid the nest the first few days that the mama's sitting on it because it makes her really nervous when you open the door. Don't approach the nest when they're fledging. You can end up with a bird out on the ground and you don't want that. That could be uh, cat food if you can't come out and get back in. Bad weather, predators. Uh, you, you can lead predators to the nest if you repeatedly go the same way. The snakes, raccoons, everything follow your scent to the box, even if they don't know it's there ahead of time. So change it up. <laughs> don't force the bird off the nest. I, I like that. It looks like he's putting it in a pot. Yeah. And don't handle the birds with eggs. That's very important. Uh, this is for nest watch. You want to tag your, 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 your nest, uh, the one that you're going to monitor. Give it a number, a name, or whatever. Make sure you know what kind of bird that you're talking about. And then you just do your data collection and turn it in. Uh, visit, we, we recommend once a week, four or five days uh, minimum. So you don't disturb the birds any more than, than necessary. This is what makes it fun. You open a box, you never know what you're going to get. I mean, I, I, like, I like to liken it to Forrest Gump. You know, it's like a box of chocolates. <laughs> so you, you, uh, there are times where it's not all that good. Pesticides, that was one of the main problems that uh, uh, worked toward the decline of bird populations back in the 60s and 70s, DDT and things like that. We know that you're going to use it. Everybody doesn't like bugs around their yard, and everybody, you know, things like that, but try to keep it to a minimum because the insects feed the birds. What do they eat? Anthropod, arthropod, grasshoppers, beetles, spiders. Mealworms. Everybody knows about mealworms. They love them. But they're a treat. They can exist without them. Mealworms are people food. They won't really. You put mealworms out, it draws the birds and you get pictures like this. <laughs> Here's one with a little small frog. They will occasionally eat an uh, amphibian. You can plant native plants. We have handouts on the publication table back there with native plants, and I know we have a lot of master naturalists in, in here. Uh, plant the plants, you use them for landscaping, they also draw the insects, draw the birds. I'm not a master naturalist, I'm not even a gardener. Ma'am? Ah. Yeah, I got supper stamped right across there. I know. Berries are mainly uh, plants with berries. Even the old mistletoe is a, is a very good plant for bluebirds because in the wintertime when the bug population drops way off because of the weather, they turn to the berries. Nuts and seeds, they don't have the capability of cracking the shells and getting the, the, the meat out of the the heart of the shell. So if you're going to try to feed them, feed them without the shell. Water is important. Don't have it on here, but uh, you can you, know, you can see the sidewalk on the left lower. That's ice from, this is somewhere where it's cold. And when it melts, it, they'll drink the water out of it. Bird bath. Bird bath has to be really shallow because bluebirds have little tiny, tiny legs. They're short. They're, uh, Let's see, how can I say this politically correctly? If you look at them, they're well, kind of like this. 
So if you if you put the water too deep, they're going to get parts of them wet that they don't want. But they will will play in a, in a bird bath. They're a blast. We're going to talk about family matters right now, courtship. And this is a beautiful shot of a, of a male. He's fish, He's trying to, he's doing a wing wave, trying to entice her. Well, he must be doing some good because she's doing a happy dance. Look at that, one on one foot. Now, he'll lead her to several nesting spots. Uh, birds of North America say anywhere from three to four or five. And then she has the final say so on which one is used, which ones aren't used. I think you're going to see this picture again. This is Mr. Kinnears, and he's one of our main, our real speakers, our professionals. This is one of his shots. So most of these are, but I never get tired of looking at them. The bird will bring the straw, the grass, whatever they're going to build their nest out of, and they'll use what is available in the area that they're in. Where I'm at, Every, every nest is made out of pine straw, almost 99% pine straw. It's real tightly woven. Uh, out here, you'll see some that are mainly, uh, yep, try it. I didn't do that, yeah. Wow. No, I didn't push it. That's not me. Somebody forgot to pay the, pay the light bill. Okay, the male will bring material to the female when she's building the nest. He helps. He doesn't build the nest. Only the female builds the nest, but he's got to keep her busy. He doesn't want her to lose track of what she's supposed to be doing. So, yeah, there's a reason for it. Now, here's a picture of a couple nests. One on the left is pine straw, like I was talking about. One on the right is uh, grasses. And it is endemic of where the area is, whatever is available. So, uh They've been known to strip cedar off of a tree and use strips of cedar to build a nest. Anybody have a problem with that one? Hmm? I can't say a word about it. And then when it's all over, there's about that much love involved, and then we start our family. Uh, typical eggs, typical clutch, we call it, is three to five eggs, and they can go up to six or seven. And when you're checking your nest, the nest can be, every bird builds it differently. You can have one bird will build a nest about two or three inches. Another one will build it up to the hole in the box. And when you open the door to look in there, those tall ones are a little bit hard to see because the cup is down below about that far. So we use, see the mirror, it is, it's like a big dental mirror that the dentist uses to see the back of your teeth. It's also, it's called an inspection mirror. You can get it on Amazon for about $12. And that way you don't have to disturb the nest or, or anything. And then this one has has a few uh, feathers in it. White eggs. These are bluebird eggs and they're white. About 1% to 2% of the eggs laid are white. They produce a very normal blue bird. And the mother that lays the white eggs will always, almost always, lay white eggs. So it's just something in their genes. But they're normal, normal bluebirds come out of them. That's her on the, on the eggs, incubating. And she is, really, really, this gentleman here furnished this picture. I hope we had your permission. <laughs> A little late, isn't it? Uh, yeah, that's beautiful, yeah. That, that expression is priceless, like. Do you really? Do you, are, are you really going to close the door? <laughs> this is what they look like. And only a mother can love one when they're first born. They're naked. Or as a redneck said, naked. So uh, this is a progression of their age. You can tell by feathers. Lunchtime. That's a fairly large insect. Can't hardly get it through the door. And after they're done, they do their business. And a bluebird nest is probably one of the cleanest you'll ever see because when they do their business, they do it in a built-in pamper, diaper, called a, called a fecal sac. And the mother will 
go in and retrieve it, take it out, and dispose of it. Usually far away so that it doesn't draw predators. This, the smell was obvious reason. Linda Crum had Linda Crum, our treasurer, witnessed one of them go in and pull it out and go up on a pine limb. She must have been OCD because she put these fecal sacks in a row on this pine limb. <laughs> Here you go. That's what we call fledging. Usually they'll fledge in 16 days, 16 to 20 days. I like to say 16 because when you, you raise your kids and they get their driver's license at what age? Ours get their flying license at 16. So here we go. So it can could be a few more. And when they, when they fledge, they stay in the same area very close. They'll go up on the branches. It's called branching. That's where their education part starts. Mom and dad will teach them how to, or, or help them learn better how to fend for themselves. Uh, they can hunt. They can drop down and feed right out of the box, but they're not always successful. But mom and dad will feed them literally for two to three weeks or even longer. When they're done, you need to take the nest out of the box. Don't leave it, because a bird will build on top of it, and the more they build, they build up closer to the, to the hole, and the closer they are to the hole, the easier it is for a predator to reach in and disturb the nest or get something out of it. Don't wash it, just brush it out. Don't never use any chemicals in the box. I took this from one of our speakers who you'll see here in a little while. You too can be an extra special human being. Hazards, and there are many. Nature can be cruel. Some parts of the country have blowfly blow problems and they're not, uh, that's not Texas, so thankfully we don't have that. Wasps, you open your box, that's a hazard to you and the birds. A little trick on the, on, the, on the box is take a bar of ivory soap, rub it all over the top of the lid in there. That helps prevent the nest from adhering to it. So they'll go somewhere else. There's a hazard. That's a hazard to you and I too, isn't it? Texas heat. If you'll notice, the different color boxes. This study was done, and the ambient temperature was 92.3. But as you look at the different colors of the boxes, you'll see the temperature gradually increased the darker it got. Now, close to the end, and I'm not, I don't know if I can, hey, that one right there has our heat shields on it. You find these over the, on the DIY station. There's boxes with them on it. They're made out of a very good material that is the material that they make political signs from, the ones that are scattered all over the yards all the time. Now, they won't tell me politicians aren't good for something. So you can use these and, and, and make these on, or you can buy, we have our kits available that you'll see and you can get them here later. But that does give an airflow. It has a gap, half inch gap between the box itself and gives the airflow around. That's, that's the purpose of it. Now the darkest box in there, if you'll notice, was 108.9. All these temperatures were taken at identical same time. And you see the progression. 108.9 can actually damage, kill the eggs. So it's important to get the ventilation. And you see the gap there on, on it. Uh, my boxes, personally, I paint the top of them white. I've got a few boxes around the golf course. Uh, no, no animals, no animals were hurt in this demonstration. <laughs> now, I don't know who did this, but they used roadkill. So, I hope it was fresh. <laughs> But that shows you how far a raccoon can reach, six inches. So you take six inches in that hole and, and go down, 
That's quite a way. That's why it's important to clean your boxes out. Now to prevent this, we have the Predator Guards, the Kingston Predator Guard, made out of stovepipe. We have kits for these and demonstrations on them back here. Uh, oh, if you know a snake could crawl a wall, you betcha, you betcha. This one has the bird netting around it on the left and it actually got the snake. Here's one out in a pasture that has PVC pipe, and I believe he actually put a little grease on the pipe on this one. This, this is what fire ants will do to a nest. And they will, they will eat them up and leave nothing but bones. Ma'am? What? All oh, the eggs? The eggs are thin. They're very delicate. That's why you never tell them, you never touch an egg, a bluebird egg. You can damage it. This tree, tree tangle foot is a chemical that you can find at Amazon, on Amazon, or get it at uh, Walmart.com, and some local Walmarts have it. It looks ugly, but just a very little bit of it wrapped around the, the pipe will keep the ants from getting up in there. House sparrows, number one predator. They kill more bluebirds than coons. House cats, anything else you can come up with. They were imported in the 1850s from jolly old England. Someone thought that was a good idea. They're non native naturally, and they will kill bluebirds mercilessly. First box I checked on my trail this year, I had a dead male in the box, an empty box. He was scouting it out, getting ready to try to get a female to build a nest, and there he laid right in the bottom of it. We will have a demonstration. Another uh, presenter will tell you how to deal with these monsters. And it is, it can be a little bit graphic. There, there are some pictures in it to show what happens with, with house bears, but I think it is very, very beneficial. It'll be done in the Bosque Theater and you are there are several other breeds out there several other species of birds and they uh, they all need the nest in fact birds of North America did study in 2012 population trends the bluebird out of 63 in need of help in other words number one was the closest to the to being Desperately, uh, I'm not. I don't want to use the term extinct, endangered, or whatever. Okay, number one out of 63, bluebird ranks 57. That's how successful the bluebirders have been over the last few years. Now, that's not to say quit bluebirding, quit putting boxes up. No, no way. Can't have too many bluebirds to start with. But the other other ones that do go in there, and I love to see them. I've got a I've got a nest right now with a titmouse nest, I mean a, a chickadee nest, and a titmouse built on top of it with six eggs. And I've got one chickadee nest with six eggs. And uh, they all need these boxes. I'm fixing to show you some of them. And don't evict them. We're an equal opportunity housing authority. <laughs> Unless they happen to be a sparrow. We were, we're we don't, I hate them, <laughs> I hate them. This one is ranked number seven, Problem Prothonotary Warbler, beautiful bird. Now, all of these birds are found somewhere in Texas. Maybe not in your neighborhood, but they're, they're around. Brown-headed nuthatch. And you see the population number on there. Texas. No, I'm sorry. Nationwide. Nationwide. You see the different types of material that they use in the nest. So when you open your box and you see a, a strange nest, you may be able to identify it. No, these birds will come in and make a nest sometimes before you ever get a bluebird. 
I mean, they'll, it's just whoever gets there first. They'll stake their territory. I've also seen some videos, some of you here probably have too, of a wren throwing bluebird eggs out of the nest. Throwing baby bluebirds out of the nest. That's right, that's right. Chickadee, I love their nest. That bright green moss, they use the live moss, and I have these anywhere from one and a half inches to six inches deep in the box. Now, I just learned recently from someone that about chickadees, which is very interesting to me. Chickadees only feed caterpillar worms. This came from birds of North America. That's pretty uh, selective diet. Now, there's six eggs in that nest I've got. That's six, six uh, babies when they hatch. It takes 5,000 caterpillar worms to raise a batch of chickadees. They only nest once a year. I wonder why. She's worn out. That's a lot of trips to raise a bunch of chickadees. They are precious, though. That little egg in there is about the size of my little fingernail. And it's just, just something about opening the box and seeing them. It's just, man, it does your heart good. That flycatcher is a titmouse. You notice these rankings. on the bluebird. That's what we call the object of our affection. We never get tired of looking at them. Our motto is helping bluebirds across Texas one nest box at a time. And the people who came ahead of me in this organization have done a tremendous job I can't take credit for it, but you can because those one nest boxes are the ones that people like you have put out. It's not the big big trails, people with 150 or whatever. It's the yards. I got 50 on my golf course trail around the neighborhood, but I bet you there's 100 in the people's yards that I don't check and don't get reported mostly to Nest Watch. I'm trying to talk them into getting on Nest Watch, but uh, you get your box. You get it mounted, you find a spot for it, you get it mounted, I guarantee you, you'll get some pleasure out of it. And this is from our president, and it's true. We don't want the last chapter to be written. Okay, folks. That is it. Okay. I will, we're not supposed to, but I will try to take a few questions. Right. Okay. Gotcha. Thank you. And if I can't answer, Test. no, I'll find somebody that can. Test. Test. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of things can cause it. The question is, he put the box out in early spring. A male and female came in and, and moved. Did they build the nest? They just, okay. They will do this often. They'll come in. Like I said earlier, they'll check out three or four different nesting areas. And and they just may not have decided on that. She, she may not have decided that that's the one she wanted for whatever reason. Uh, I had that happen this year already in my backyard. Bluebird all over it for a day or two with salt, and then bingo, psst, haven't seen it since. It's just the nature of the bird. I have, I put a nest box up for a lady in her backyard. She said, how long, well, I'll tell you what, let me, let me, let me back up. They called me and said, I want a box. I went over there. I live in a, a retirement neighborhood. Everybody in there is, I'm probably the youngest one there. 
<clears throat> and we have several ladies that don't have husbands, and they'll want boxes in this. How can I get them mounted? Well, I've started furnishing a mounting service in my neighborhood. I, I buy the poles and all the materials. <laughs> uh, bird box mounting service. I forgot to tell you this was, uh, I forgot to tell you this was R rated. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> I've started doing that, and all I do is I charge them $5. That's what it costs me by the time I buy all the materials, and I'll buy a couple hundred at a time. So I went down to her house and put the box up. She said, How long will it be? I said, Well, it could be any, any time. Next day I went by the mailbox, and she met me out there, and she said, I got a male and a female on my box already today. I was at a man's house last week, stalled a box, went over on their patio, was sitting there signing them a book. A Bluebird uh, Society member. And I was, I had my back turned to the yard when he and she were sitting there, we were talking. I was giving them my presentation, you know. Uh, my wife will tell you, when I get started on Bluebirds, I'll talk to your eyes glaze over. So. They would ask a question, and boy, here we go. I, take it. I was explaining what I could. And I was filling out the membership. I looked up, and in the reflection on the window, I looked up. I said, is that a male bluebird on your box? <gasps> oh, my God. I mean, just that fast. It can, it can happen. Or it can take weeks or months. It just, it's just the look of the draw. And to answer your question, what happened? I had a box last year. Uh, this is terrible. I hate to say it, but. The birds got up to within two days of fledging. I mean, they were ready. They were going to be gone that week. They had a bad thunderstorm come through. Just, just, just lightning and thunder, like we had here recently, where the mother and daddy disappeared. They never came back. I watched those birds starve to death in a box, and that hurt. But that's mother nature. Mother nature does that to us. Anybody else? What you got? I could not answer to that. Anybody know about that? Coffee grounds repelling ants. Yeah. I, I, that's a new one for me. Yeah. No. Chemicals are chemicals. Uh, they may be intended for one thing and have adverse reaction on something else. I'm not a chemist. I, I, I hate to. Anybody? Anybody? Did anybody hear what she said? She said she's worried about the she's worried about the chemicals that she has to put out for the, to grow her hay. You know, will it get on the insects and will the birds be damaged by it? I would say the possibility is there, but you can't stop what you're doing to to live. Oh, yeah. What'd you say? Yeah, that's true. It may disrupt the population of the insects that feed on broadleaf plants when you're spreading things, herbicides to get rid of broadleaf plants. Everything we do, everything man does just about affects the scheme of things. Well, yeah. Normally they said, okay, uh, is it where, which direction do you face your box? Okay. Normally we say toward the prevailing wind. That's where you're going to get the most breeze in Texas. Now, if you're in Michigan, you don't want the cold wind blowing, so you'll face it south, you know. So just just try it. One thing you can do, one thing I've had success with is on the birds, 
The male will fly around and look scouting out, starting about October trying to find places to nest. And he'll fly around and find a hole, tree, nest box, whatever. Well, if he flies down this side of the street and your box is pointed this way, he sees that hole. So you've got a chance he's going to check it out. If he flies on the other side of the street, he sees the back of the box, he may not. So if you have a box that's been there a while and you're not getting any activity on it, turn it 90 degrees. Just reorient it a little bit. Sometimes that will work. We have a person up in Kaufman that puts the white, his boxes are white, and he, he paints fake holes on all three sides, all four sides. I think that's a wonderful idea. I really do. I mean, that bird can't miss it. <laughs> yeah, that's where it is, a black circle. And that, I mean, he, he can't miss that box. Now, one thing that's neat, I think, uh, I share with you on Nest Watch is when you go on there, that brings up a Google map. You click on there, and it puts your location of your, your box. I painted all my boxes white on top. I can go on a Google map right now and, and, and do the satellite view, and I can see my each individual box around the around the golf course. You can zoom in that, that far. That's fun. That's fun. Anybody? Yes, sir. Um, I have a very different reading where I live. My most concern is about the field. So I have a number of meetings where it's really close to the front, so that's why I think it's south. Yeah. Yeah. He, he faces his box in Florida, right? Okay. He faces his box south. The prevailing wind blowing that way. And I mean, well, <laughs> in Florida, you can get it every way, that's for sure. But generally out of the south. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. 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 Okay, you had a hatchling and so the rest of the eggs. You had it last night, you could have a full box of hatchlings when you get home. I mean, they, they usually normally hatch fairly close together. Now, the mama will lay the eggs one at one day at one a day consecutively. She'll lay today, she'll lay tomorrow, she'll lay until she gets through. But when they hatch, they, they hatch generally really close together. Yeah, you, you won't leave, they leave them four or five days and give them time to get, get used to. Mama bringing them food or whatever. Yes, ma'am. Hi, good question. In this part of the country in Texas, we can have a bluebird that has two to three batches of babies. Had a few of them, had four. So our season runs from this year. First one I know about was Linda Crumb. Had eggs February the 1st. Hatched Valentine's Day. And they've, fly, they've already fledged. No, not necessarily, but they will come back to a box that they've been successful in. They don't stay in the box. These are not bird houses. These are nest boxes. Yeah, it, it's in their nature that they're going to check it out. But they're, they're, we have we have migratory birds that come in from the north, and we have birds that stay here because we don't have enough winter to push them away, which is good for us. One of the things that we are really blessed with in Texas is having that many birds and that's part of the reason. One of the study bird studies showed that East Texas had the densest population of bluebirds in North America recently. So yes ma'am. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the female will lay her eggs and, and uh, they'll hatch. And actually before they fledge, she's already in the process of uh, breeding, getting ready for the next bunch. So yeah, they're, they're very pretty prolific. 
her question was, do you, she lost a male out of a pair, and there's five or six eggs in, in the box, and the female been feeding, and then there's another male, you said another male in the territory checking everything out. So they will stay with the same female very, you know, normally. Things happen, and they, they can change. They'll take another one. Anything else? Question, when she leaves? How quickly will she lay Okay, once a fledgling leaves a box, and the, and the box is empty, how quickly will mother lay more eggs? Very quickly. I say, you're talking about, no, it'd be, it would probably be two to three to four weeks or so, maybe. Uh, you're talking about three nesting cycles from February to August. Takes about 14 days for the eggs to hatch. Two weeks. Two weeks for them to fly, and then they're gone. So, okay, I'm done, folks. Hope you enjoyed it.